What is up, guys? It's me. That one, we are back with part three for What If Asta Was Chainsaw Man. It has been three months since part two came out. So there's a high likelihood you have no idea what I'm talking about, or this series could be completely new to you. If either of those are the case, you should move your eyes upwards to the top upper right hand corner of your screen where you'll find a playlist that I've kindly linked where you can go and watch parts one and two and get caught up. But I also will do a quick little recap just for anyone who doesn't want to do that and just get right back into the story. Speaking of which, where were we? Yeah, that's right. Asta had helped defeat Noel's out of control magic using his chainsaw abilities, that being Pochita's power and would have now been sent on his first mission with him, Magna, and Noel, being sent out to that far bordering village in the Forsaken Realm. Anyway, Asta would be revealed to by Magna that him and Noel's first mission would be sent boar hunting at the Soshi village in the Forsaken Realm. Yami explained that the request is coming from an old man who managed to win a bet against himself and Magna. Hearing the excuse, the two new members would try to get out of it, but they would comply after Yami grabs Asta's head and starts squeezing it. Noelle would be concerned and would start complaining, but re in reality she'd really be worried about her magic going out of control again and destroying the village. To this, Magna would say that he will actually be coming along as a supervisor for both of them, to watch over them and make sure that they do their jobs correctly. Magna would let them know that they are going to have to fly there by broom as Finral's never been to the village, so he can't take them there. This is when both Asta and Noelle would reveal to him that they can't ride a broom. And so Magna would have to drive with both of them using Crazy Cyclone, his bikered out broom, which luckily has enough seats for both of them. The two passengers would suck, to be frank. Noelle would be gripping onto Magna the entire flight, and while she's squeezing him to death, Asta would be basically ignoring the entire safety protocol standing up on the broom and looking around amazed by being able to fly since he's never been able to fly in one before. As such, Magna would be very exhausted by the time they arrive at Sonshi. The moment they do arrive in the village, the first thing you notice is that the entire place is being covered by a thick mist and Noelle thinks it was created by magic. Magna would turn looking at Asa asking him to do that weird thing again where he grows all the swords out of his body. You know, those weird spinning sword things. Oh, that? Uh, sure. Asta would quickly open his shirt, which Noel would look at his buff muscles and would look away, quickly calling him an idiot. As Asta grabs the cord on his chest, pulling and yanking on it with a hard pull, suddenly we would hear a roaring of an engine as chainsaws would rip out of Asta's head and arms. Oh, that hurts! Asta would run forward, cutting through the mist with his chainsaws, completely cutting through the mist and revealing the villagers about to be executed, with thousands of sharp icicles floating above the entire village. Manu would manage to throw fireballs, completely melting the icicles and neutralizing the spell. That's when they, one of the mages who were attacking the village, Heath Grice, would attack Magna. Magna would see that the village chief had actually been killed already. And as Magna is about to get attacked by Heath from an icicle attack, Asta would run forward using his chainsaw and slashing through the spell, cutting it in half. Asta would demand to know what their identity is and who they are, with Magna thinking that it's possible they must have come from outside the Clover Kingdom. Heath would look at his pocket watch and declares that he'll destroy all of them in five minutes, holding up his hands as he has one of his palms open, revealing one finger per minute. One of the mages would activate the mist-based spell again, with Asta completely negating it while this Heath guy analyzes him. When Asta would demand why he's attacking this village, he would evade the question by simply saying that the people from the Forsaken region are nothing but trash. Brutes that aren't worth saving, that have no magical prowess at all. Heath saying this would trigger a memory from Asta's past, we see him holding Poshita, while Sister Lily explains to Asa as a child how the realms are set up with favoritism towards magical power. Asa would scream out in that metallic voice from him being Chainsaw Man that it's his goal as Wizard King to protect the lesser people as he continues his assault. His associates would start firing at the villagers to which Asa could only cut a couple in half with Magna's help melting them and it would ultimately be no use as Noelle couldn't even hit anything with her magic Magna telling her to just run, 
This would be when a little girl runs up to her and begs her to protect them, causing Noelle to gain courage and also grow a new spell inside her grimoire. This would allow Noelle to create a water barrier, protecting all the villagers, and with this opening, Asa would lunge forward, slashing his chainsaw into Heath's neck and completely slicing his head off from his body, blood spurting across the ground as his other mages would be terrified from what Asta had just done. <laughs> Whoops, once I get like this, man, it gets really tough to hold back. <laughs> I think it's pretty clear from the events of Chainsaw Man that once you enter into the, your half-hybrid demon mode, you become sort of insane. So Asta is going batshit crazy right now, and is probably going to go and kill the rest of them too, with Magna yelling at Asta to not kill them, saying that they need information. Upon being defeated by Asta, Magna would take down the other rest who had been demoralized from Asta's insta-kill of Heath, and Magna would try to interrogate them. But again, just like in the original timeline, they would use a magical item to end their own lives. Asta would be about to fall to the ground unconscious, and as he does, an anti-bird would appear from his robes flying towards one of the houses. Inside the villager's house, there'd be a stone with the symbol of a crescent moon and three four-sided stars on it. The bird would retake the stone, returning it to Asta, and starts pecking at Asta's head until he wakes up from his chainsaw state, still healing. Asta would notice a stone on its beak, trying to return the stone, asking who this belongs to. And it, the village decides that it belongs to the village chief since it was from his house. The villagers are saying that they'll be giving it to the Black Bulls as a sign of gratitude. Unbeknownst to Asta, Noel would be very impressed with his fight, even if he was a little gory, you know? Only one of Heath's men had escaped, having left before the Black Bulls had arrived, and would be meeting up with a strange man wearing the robe of the Golden Dawn. However, when he tells this mysterious man that they had failed, he would not seem frustrated, no. And instead, he'd be pleased as he puts a piece of stone inside of a Sephiroth. He would explain there's no major setback on this plan, learning that the stone which he had asked for them to retrieve is just in the Black Bull's hands, one of his comrades. Back in the Black Bull's hideout, they have completed their mission in Soshi. With Asta, Magna, and Noel returning, they'd be greeted by Yami and Vanessa. Yami revealing that the Magic Forensic Division had already started their investigation into the corpses of those who had attacked Soshi Village, though they haven't seemed to find anything yet about their affiliation. Yami would then inform them that the Wizard King had actually bestowed the Black Bulls a star for what Three's effort had given them, and their great performance. This additional star had put them with only 100 stars difference between the top squad, the Golden Dawn. After this, Yami would distribute the money for everyone in the squad, with Asta being so excited to receive his first money from his job. Noelle would not be too amazed by the amount, considering she's royalty. While congratulating the new members with their first salary, Vanessa would invite them to go on a shopping trip with her into the castle town in the common region. Just like in the original, Asta, Noelle, and Vanessa would head to Kika, with the girls getting flirted with and Asta being obnoxious in town. Everyone would have their attention focused on the Black Bulls, wondering why they're in town. This is also because of their notoriety as being the worst Magic Knight squad, but also it's a good deterrent for criminals with them being there. Anyway, Vanessa would take the two of them to the Black Market, offering Noelle to help her find something, a magical item perhaps, that would help her control her magic batter. This is when Seki would try flirting with them and Asta would step in, the two of them immediately shutting Seki down. Asta would recognize Seki, but doesn't remember his name, just remembering that he was the guy who he cut his arms off. Seke would have his arms back after some healing magic, but man was that terrifying. He would be scared of Asta, to be completely honest. He would try to criticize Asta for knowing two salacious women like this, which I don't know why that's a thing. This is a real thing that happened in the anime. I don't know why this matters, but anyway. Uh, when he does this, Asta would remind Seke of his recent achievement and getting a star from the Wizard King, and in that exact moment, a thief would snatch the belonging of an elderly woman who was gambling against Seke. Asta would run after the thief, and Seke would activate one of his spells. He would also start pursuing them after giving Vanessa and Noel a few flirtatious riz-filled words. With negative riz, because Seke is trash. But anyway... It would have the opposite effect on them. They both were drier than the Sahara. The thief would try to blast the spell at Asta, to which he would just dodge it, making Seke get hit by it instead. Seke managed to stop the thief by charging directly at him with his weird bug magic. Unfortunately, the thief would paralyze Seke with paralyzation magic, an item, and causing him to lose consciousness. 
Seke, who thinks he's going to die, starts giving his final wishes to Asta, who would reject his dying wish, telling him to live and, f and do it himself as he kicks Seke out of the way. Vanessa would take one look at his injury and tell Seke he's not going to die, applying an ointment on his foot. Seke leaves to go and get more treatment and also escape his embarrassment. Asta would throw a punch, knocking the thief out as he takes the elderly woman's belongings back before leaving the black market themselves. After they leave, the elderly woman would transform back into a middle-aged man who would be revealed to be the current wizard king, Julius Novacrono. As he receives a call from one of his subordinates, being Marx, who's angry that the wizard king is out on the grounds, out of the castle when he should be back at the castle helping the king and doing all of this and this, Julius would not be excited. Anyway, he would remain calm, hinting that he's found an interesting candidate to solve the problem for them. That problem, of course, being the recent dungeon that has just popped up in the Diamond Kingdom. Well, the border between the Diamond and Clover Kingdom, but you know what I mean. Back at the Black Market Casino, we see Magna still gambling, having lost all of his possessions and is just down to his underwear, determined on winning. Anyway, back at the Black Bull's base, the Magic Knight headquarters, Yami would have his toilet break for several millennia, or so it seems, until eventually a few days later he would come back with a report from the Wizard King himself requesting Asta to go on a mission into the new dungeon between the border of the Diamond Kingdom and the Clover Kingdom. And this time it would be Luck, Noel, and Asta who would be sent off to go and investigate the new dungeon and receive the treasures that could be stored within it. Asta wouldn't know what a dungeon is, and Vanessa would decide to explain it to him, explaining to Asta that the dungeons are a manifestation of mana that have a high variety of magical treasures that can be considerably dangerous, especially for if they fall into the wrong hands. Asta would be honored that the Wizard King had asked for them personally to go, with Yami neglecting to tell them that there would be another squad sent as well, being a trio from the Golden Dawn having the Golden Dawn and Black Bulls both being on this mission. Vanessa would quickly add that there's also powerful traps that guard these treasures. Luck, Noel, and Asta would immediately head out. On their way to the inner side of the dungeon, on the inside by the Clover Kingdom, Asta and Noel would begin arguing about what the name of the bird that follows Asta around constantly should be. After several name propositions, they decided to go with Luck's suggestion of naming the bird Narrow. Asta would be holding their light, their lantern, and would inevitably drop it as they're descending into the dungeon. Which Luck wouldn't mind, but Noel definitely would. After a brief step in the dark, they would have found their way to the inner sections of the dungeon. Both Luck and Noel would mention that this dungeon seems to be full to the brim with mana. Asta would sulk, realizing that he has zero ability to sense or even possess mana, as he tickles his finger across the ground in a circle, just pouting at his inability. However, during this tantrum, Asta would suddenly activate a trap spell. This would cause him to explode into pieces, which would horrify Noel and Luck. Luck would, however, be amazed though, as Asta would simply pull himself up as he grabs his arm that was blasted off and reattaches it to his body, his body healing insanely quickly. Remember, just like Denji from the original Chainsaw Man, Asta has an even higher healing factor. Being that he has a naturally powerful body, he would be blessed to be able to recover insanely fast from any damage, and he's essentially immortal because of Pochita inside of his heart. So, Luck would push him into more traps as Asta basically acts as a meat shield for their squad, Noel dragging his unconscious bloody corpse around with them. Luck would laugh, saying that he's an interesting punching bag. To this, Noel would get annoyed, telling Luck that if they actually fought, she bet Asta would win. Luck would turn laughing, saying, Oh, really? You think he's faster than me? <laughs> Noel would be wondering why Asta's letting Luck push him around like this, with Asta's healing at that moment, pulling himself up and saying thanks for carrying him. As he brushes himself off, all of his wounds disappearing. Immediately, Luck would sense a strong presence inside the dungeon, being the most powerful person. He would leave the two new members all on their own, saying that he's going after the big boss. In another moment, a plant-based spell would entangle Noel. Asta turning his left hand into a chainsaw and cutting the plant into bits, freeing Noel. However, after freeing Noel, the spell would reorganize itself, completely surrounding Asta on his other non-transformed halves and preparing to eat him. Suddenly, a rain of swords would fall upon Asta, destroying the entire trap. Asta and Noel would look up, seeing the appearance of the strongest squad of magic knights in the Clover Kingdom, the Golden Dawn. 
One of these members, of course, being Asta's childhood friend and rival, you know. Asta and Yuno would be delighted to run into each other and be reunited, which unfortunately would be ended by Yuno's senior Klaus. Klaus would interrupt them asking his reason for saving a member of the Black Bulls. This would cause a confrontation between the noble Klaus and Asta. Asta would yell saying it's rude to get in between brothers you know. Klaus would eye up both Yuno and Asta saying that the two look nothing alike, which would cause Asta to fall over asking if he really doesn't look nearly as handsome as Yuno. While this is going on, Mimosa Vermilion would start a conversation with Noelle, her cousin. The Vermilions and Silvas being close and also having their own histories with the Silver Eagles and the Crimson Lions, as you all know if you've actually seen Black Clover. It's at this point Asta and Klaus would be just about to fight with Klaus telling Asta it must be a lie that he had earned the Black Bulls a star. That squad never earns stars, especially from the Wizard King. Asta would challenge Klaus and the Golden Dawn to a race to see which squad can reach the center of the dungeon first. Accepting the challenge, Klaus would order Mimos to use her scanning ability, and Yuno would create a flying wind sculpture vessel that would allow them to transport themselves to the dungeon much quicker. Not wanting to be left in the dust, Asta Noel would give chase, Asta screaming that he's going to get to the middle first, on his honor as a man and a member of the Black Bulls. While they're traveling faster than Asta Noel, Yuno would tell Klaus not to underestimate Asta with him belittling the Black Bulls before him. While the two squads are racing for Dominion to get it to the center of the dungeon, luck would have reached his target. A group of diamond mages sent by the Diamond Kingdom, led by a diamond general Lotus Humalt, to conquer the dungeon. A famous warrior who's actually battled Yami before in war. Back to the two squads racing for the center, the Golden Dawn members would arrive at the center of the dungeon first. And as they're preparing to explore it, discussing it, Mimosa would suddenly be attacked, Klaus demanding who would attack one of their members without announcing themselves, turning and spinning his arm and his cloak flying in the wind, you know, how they look. This would be when Mars would reveal himself. Walking forward, he would have a strange gem in his forehead, as he has a powerful steel magic, telling them to get out of his way, or he'll kill them all. As Asta and Noelle make their way towards the center of the dungeon, Noelle will be perplexed by this odd magic power she's feeling. But Asta, he's none the wiser into the storm that he's about to walk into. If you guys want to see the next part for what if Asta was Chainsaw Man, make sure to like button, comment below what you thought, and subscribe to this channel for more videos from me. Your guys' goal to get part 4 to come out as soon as possible is two to 300 likes. If we get somewhere in there, I'll be happy, and I'll start working on scripting the next part for you. And yeah, that's about it. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.